Okay, is there a reason for this disaster? Yeah, I'm supposed to be working, but I can't concentrate on work. The boat is bouncing and um, all I can hear is banging, banging, banging. So I've decided to clear the locker. Um, purely because we're going through chafe protectors like mad. But I found another chafe protector and I've also found um, a chafe uh, protector that one of our subscribers sent to us. So I'm going to have to make some more chafe protectors because we're just going through them. Um, because with these conditions, they're just not lasting. It's another day and it's a much nicer day. We're still getting swell in and it's still breaking along the coast as you can see but it's not like the spectacular ones we had yesterday which were coming up and the spray was practically landing here. Um, way over that way on the banks I can see the seas breaking on the sandbanks. I don't think we'll be able to capture that on camera. And um, But one of the things that we had yesterday was the direction was also slightly different and it was going in through the entrance and rolling up and it was making the boat hunt on its ropes it's wearing through um, the protectors we put on the ropes and uh, it was very very bumpy it was very unpleasant but today is a much nicer looking day it's more pleasant in the uh, river pontoon and we're hoping that tomorrow we'll be able to get off go south and have a much easier time of it well i'm glad um our one of our subscribers uh gave us um this tubing as chafe protectors um because the chafe protectors i had i put this one on yesterday and as you can see it's completely worn it through through within the day so um because it was such a bad um conditions the ropes were just getting worn now I put this one on later and yes, it has got dirty, but dirt is fine. Um, but the fabric is itself is still good. So I've had to um, put the chafe protectors that I've made out of these all over the place because <laughs> the ones I made, uh -huh. Yeah, I'm going to have to put in this one. It was extremely bouncy in here though, wasn't it? It was very, very bouncy. Um, normally you just do not have that. And apparently if you're in Arklo and you get conditions that it's bringing it up into the river, then, you know, it's a world of pain outside because it's very rare um, that water comes up the river that far because you have to go round a bend and everything. So it was so bouncy, but as I say, my chafe protectors, you do need them though, because um, without the chafe protectors, uh, then it's your rope uh, that's in, um, that's going to get worn and rather sacrifice a bit of denim um, than um, rope, especially as uh, these jeans are Beverly's old jeans, because when she rips a hole in them, that I, I class them as a fair game for me. Yeah, but you've now ripped a bigger hole in them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've ripped a bigger hole, but yeah. So like Beverly's wearing a pair of jeans that's got a hole in and I'm looking, oh, well, that's next year's uh, chief protectors when I get a new pair of jeans for her.
Okay, well, Lovely and I seem to have magically uh, appeared in Rossla. Yes, we're no longer in Arklow. We're no. <laughs> I just banged my ruby shoes together. <laughs> Let's see, Kansas Toto. Um, We've magically appeared in Rossler because we had a bit of a time of it in Arklow. Don't get me wrong, Arklow was great, but we had trouble getting out of the place. Yeah, what I'd done is I'd put in all the waypoints from our previous passage and um, because of the way that the uh, tides are working, uh, we would have gone off about the same time. Two hours, um, two hours before Dover High Water. Exactly. So. Um, just because of the passage um, it was roughly the same time but I put in all the previous um, waypoints from where we actually did our journey from our log into that chart photo there yeah um, and the reason I did that was when we went over to Kilmore we did make the corner and um, it was just a way for me to sort of like know that we were still going to make the corner. The corner being the southeast corner of Ireland, Carnsore Point. Correct. But um, what happened was we came out and we just came out into fog. <laughs> yeah. We got a quarter of a mile offshore and the, sh and the shoreline disappeared. Uh, a third of a mile offshore and we couldn't see the entrance of the harbour anymore. <laughs> yeah, what happened, when we came out, the fog wasn't, too, you know, don't get me wrong, it was still visibility of about a mile and a half. But by the time we got to the outfall marker, which is not that far out. No, about, uh, a, quarter, about a quarter of a mile offshore. Uh, to, of Arklo, um, I couldn't see the shore anymore. So we figured it probably wasn't a good day to try it. So we went back into Arklo and sat there for a few hours. But then um, we could see that the fog was um, disappearing yeah. and lifting. So we decided that we would uh, come out. But by then we had lost our extra couple of hours that we needed to get around Carnesore Point. So that wasn't going to happen. So we decided that we were going to come to Rosslare. Um, and I have to say, it's a much happier anchorage than I initially thought. Yeah, because the problem was that by the time we got down toward Carnesore Point, even if we had gone round, the wind coming round the point was picking up quite considerably. I mean, we had about 20, 22 knots on the nose. Yeah, but you would have had the tide against you. and that's... We would have had the tide against us too, and it's quite a strong tide. We didn't fancy it. So we thought, no, we'll go into Rossler and we'll drop the anchor. But while we were here, the wind just continued building and building. And eventually we got force fives, occasional gusts of six. Um, we're just glad that we're in. We've got a cliff about 200 metres that way, a small cliff. And it means that while we do get wind, there's no sea state here. Mm. And um, sea state is the one thing that is going to make your anchoring very unpleasant. Um, but um, the wind is also coming from the land and that is fine. But uh, there are some issues with Rosslare, uh, one of them being that um, you can't get too close to the ferry port, can you, you, you must anchor at least 500 metres to the west of the ferry port. The ferry port's over there about, um, the ferry port's over there about 550 metres away. We are close. We are as close as we can get. The reason for that is the, the piers of the ferry port stick out a good distance. And if there's any current coming around the corner, they provide shelter here in this little corner of the bay. So we've got um, a charted depth of three metres under us. Um, the bottom of the tide is about half a metre, so we've got about three and a half metres under the boat at all times. The uplift of the tide is about another metre and a half. And uh, we've got 40 metres of chain out. And we're sitting here quite comfortably. Yeah, and the reason we didn't uh, video the um, passage is first of all, we've actually done this passage already. Yes, so, so uh, there's an episode up there. Uh, and the other one was we were motoring. Now Beverly and I find motoring, even motor sailing, which is what I, we actually did, a little bit of motor sailing. We did manage to get the sail up. We find it dull. And if we find it dull, we're just not going to bore you. If that. I think it's dull, then I'm not going to force it on you lot, because you'll think it's dull too, probably. <laughs> Well, we, we, we found it so dull, I didn't even want to film it. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no fun motor sailing. No, there isn't. So, and that's part of what we want to show is, is fun of sailing, but we're clearly not motor, motor, motorboat people. No, we're not. When we got in here last night, 
we were very very tired we just dropped the anchor and when we woke up this morning we realized that we had actually anchored very very close to a what I can only call a crab pot field I mean there is literally a raft of crab pots right behind us covering hundreds of meters and there's absolutely loads of them I've never seen so many in one place um, they were still about 20 30 meters behind us but we weren't comfortable with that were we no and uh, according to the charted depth here we could move in closer to the cliffs about another 100 meters easily um so we decided to do that in quite high winds yes it's quite high winds here today so we had trouble lifting the anchor because the problem is that you can't drive the boat around at two or three knots when you're lifting an anchor it just doesn't work that way so because the boat is nearly at a dead stop the wind just takes control of the bow and just blows it all over the place and the person on the front has to be very very careful and keep their fingers out of the way of the chain and just lift it in bits as the, as the bow passes over the anchor lift a bit more lift a bit more and keep doing that you always make sure that uh, the chain is um, going as close to uh, vertical as possible yeah so that um, the boat is only lifting the chain and is not pulling the boat towards no. the anchor I was helming it's my job to push the boat up to the anchor using the engine and I would say basically if I had a number of tips for anchoring in strong winds it would be um, know your depth know how far that anchor has got to go off the roller before it hits the bottom this will become obvious in a few seconds once you've done that motor up to where you want to go and before the boat comes to a halt i mean maybe you're only doing one knot half a knot quarter of a knot but before it stops completely get the person in the front to drop that anchor and keep an eye on the anchor markers and when you know that anchor has hit the bottom because you remembered you recorded the depth uh, when you know that anchor has hit the bottom get the boat into slow reverse and let the person in the front keep dropping chain and the boat will get blown backwards the bow will probably hunt the person in the front can stop dropping the chain but the point is You've kept the boat under his control for as long as possible. Beverly um, didn't quite do that on the first drop. Um, she did what she normally does, which is sort of like come to a halt and then tell, tell, tell Gaynor. Tell Gaynor the boat's now at a complete halt and she can drop the chain. She started doing that and the wind just took the front of the boat. And uh, in the end I had to raise the anchor again. Yeah. Um, so that's why Beverly is saying about keeping the boat under control but, as long as possible but knowing, the knowing the depth she had to drop it she knew that if she hadn't seen the five meter mark going over the bow yet she could just lift the anchor easily mm. so you know knowing the depth you're dropping in is important for more reasons than you might normally think um so like i say motor into the wind as much as you can but be prepared for lots of hunting around as, as the wind takes the bow because the bow always falls off in the wind there's nothing you can do about it um it also makes it very hard to take a transit to see that your anchor's set um yeah because what was happening was although beverly was uh, reversing which is what we normally do uh, to make sure that the anchor is set and that we're not dragging um because we were hunting it was difficult uh but we did manage to do it we did but um it's just sort of like something you need to be aware of yeah so i guess if i put them into your order it would be know the depth you're going to drop the anchor so that you know when it's on the bottom uh, drop it in strong winds uh, drop it just before the boat comes to a halt that'll give you time to get the anchor down at least onto the seabed before you start going backwards um, motor it straight into the wind as straight as you can if you can keep the bow dead to the wind it's going to take a bit longer before one side of the bow gets pushed by the wind and be prepared for your transits to be a little on the iffy side when you check that the anchor is actually set there's nothing you can do about that the boat's just going to move around uh bubbly and i uh use snubbers and i have to say when you've got a strong wind they are absolutely vital because the snubber line is being raised and the snubber line goes back to a cleat so of course it's the cleat that's taking the pressure not the bow uh, roller not the bow roller yeah. and not your um windlass yeah so we've now got two snubbers because <laughs> that's us isn't it <laughs> we, we are maybe over cautious sailors but we have been in a situation where our first snubber hook, uh, hook has come off now that happened when we had quite a lot of waves 
and basically there was a lot of bouncing on the snubber line and that made the hook come fall off. We probably, if it had more chain out, it might have held it onto the hook. Might well have. But now, nowadays we tend to put a big loop of chain on the back just to hold the hook in place. Yeah, so the, what happens is that the chain, you can see the chain going straight down. And then it, coming back up to the snubber. And, and then back up to the snubber. And when Beverly pulls the boat away, you can actually still see the snubber rising and the chain rising. Yeah, so there's like maybe like three or four metres of chain behind the snubber hanging down. So you know, it was a good bit there just to just to keep the snubber busy. Yeah, yeah. but um, Beverly and I are just staying here in Ross Lair uh, because um, we looked at the weather and um, to go around the corner, what it would mean is that we're just going to go into yet another marina. Whereas here, with the winds we've got, um, we're in a happy anchorage. We are, and also we're expecting strong winds tomorrow as well, and maybe even the day after. So we've got plenty of supplies, plenty of water. We never miss a chance to top up our tanks, do we? No, absolutely not. So we've and got... we're, we're just going to stay here and wait for this blow to go through. Uh, because Beverly and I want to anchor as much as possible and uh, we want to sail as much as possible. One thing about this part of the world is from Arklo downwards, I mean we're talking like 30 miles, 30, 40 nautical miles here, it's all sand. You look at the land and it's all beaches, 30, 40 nautical miles of beaches, sand everywhere and about three people walking on them. Mm. So if you do have the wind coming from the land, you could anchor but with the way it's been this wind season. Yeah. You know, like uh, we're going south and the wind is uh, coming from the south. Looking at the charts, I never would have thought that Rosslair would be a good anchorage to head to because it looks so exposed in the charts, but it's only exposed from the north. Um, from the south and the west, we've got land over there, which stops the east. On the east behind us, we've got the ferry port and it's big 200 metre piers, which stops swell coming in. So it's only the north you have to worry about. As long as the wind doesn't get round to the north, you're okay. And if it gets round the north, you go round the point. Exactly. So, so that's the plan. So we're just going to sit here and enjoy our time in Rosslare and um, probably see you whenever we start sailing again. Absolutely. <laughs>